Wow. National Geographic, here I come. Yeah. You wanted a sound up? There's your sound up. Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to another edition of Borders on Budgets. On this episode, we are at the Gun Guru Australian Park in Israel. Oh, oh, kangaroo cuteness. Ganguru on the kibbutz near David in northeast Israel is a zoo. However, what sets it apart, besides the quantity of Australian animals on the facility, is how close visitors get to the animals, especially the kangaroos. A point of view from the kangaroo. Did you, did you have any expectations before petting the kangaroo? I expect them to be bigger than this. Like, like the adult to be bigger. I expected them to all be babies. They are very uh, easy temper. They are fun. They are very, very, uh, um, how do you say it, fluffy. Uh, it's fun to pet them. Now, no, this is something that I, 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 I did not know, for, for what little I know about kangaroos other than their cuteness, is uh, kangaroo claws. Uh, yeah. Wow. Those, uh, those look dangerous. The, the claws is for digging holes and dig their food. They eat uh, um, roots, they eat leaves, they eat, uh, um, sometimes they eat flowers. They love the shell of the of the eucalyptus tree. Only the shell, not the leaves. Oh, wow. But, uh, the what? average male of uh, a red kangaroo is about 100 um, kilos, and uh, their tail is about a third of their weight. So it's about like 30 kilos. Okay, dig again. I got you digging. Dig again. <laughs> Can he dig on command? Oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh, wait, hey, fantastic. Ganguru is the only facility outside of Australia that allows visitors to get up close, this close, with the kangaroos. Perhaps not the wisest idea to, uh, to pet the tail of a sleeping kangaroo, especially when the hind legs are only about a meter away, but wow, yeah. You could, uh, you could feel the power in, uh, in this guy's tail. It's fun to, to feed them from the hand. It, it tickles and they love it. They prefer to eat from your hand than to eat from the, from the ground. <laughs> At first I thought, gee, kangaroos in Israel, wouldn't that be a little too warm for them? Then I realized they're already used to the heat of the Australian outback and the desert. If they're finding shade on a day like today, let's do the same and see what else Ganguru has to offer for visitors. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. That we're in Israel, this warning is written not only in English, but in Hebrew and in Arabic. Uh, don't worry there, guy. Sorry for the close-up. I needed something for a white balance. What does he do that makes him so mischievous? He yes? jumps on visitors. Hmm? Which is, and not in a nice way. <laughs> so we, have to, we just keep a close eye on him. Oh. Here in this aviary we have these two and then we have a, a nut, three more species of cockatoo and eclectus. Eclectus are the green and the red parrots. Are they eclectic? 
Um, that's actually where their name comes from, actually. Oh, I was just that making word. that up. <laughs> um, because in the same um, uh, species of bird, the females are red and the males are green. So that's why they gave the name eclectic because there's like, you know, as different colors within the same animal, basically, which you don't see a lot in nature completely like that, especially not with parrots. The water coming down is not a mid-afternoon shower. This is just to keep the birds cool. I don't know if she's more terrified of the bird or the unfamiliar camera. Even though the lorries are used to humans, I, uh, I wonder how close I can kind of zoom in and really pick up this guy's feathers. Spectacular. How does that feel? Yeah. <laughs> In addition to being a zoo, Ganguru serves as a rehabilitation center for injured birds. Storks migrate from Africa to Israel every year and um, sometimes unfortunately some of them are injured and the park services brings us the injured birds. Um, most of the birds that stay here are actually birds that can't be released back into the wild and this is their second home. We take care of them. Um, it's a closed park and it's safe here for them. There are no predators and they have our pond here with the fish and uh, so they can have a nice rest of their life. No petting for Matt with this creature. Yeesh. One shekel for kangaroo food, that's about 30 cents. So uh, I might as well give it a go because uh, I'm never gonna get another chance to do this again. Uh, oh, it looks like in Israel we, uh, we, turn, we turn right. All right. Lunchtime for the kangaroos. Kangaroo! Food! Food! Food for the kangaroo! Oh, it's eating roots. And it prefers the food. Mm-hmm. So we got a groomer as a poser. Actually, it's not grooming. They're, that's how they cool themselves down. They lick the, the thin skin that they have in their arms and legs and and they cool the, the blood and it, it makes them cooler. Hmm. Well, uh, I, uh, I definitely can scratch this off my bucket list of things to do in life. Uh, signing off from Mir David at Ganguru. This has been another edition of Borders on Budgets. A reminder, Borders on Budgets, long distance hikes, slices of life, not a lot of money. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Whoops! Now this would be a challenge to wipe that off the lens. Oh, no.